Hey everyone, I find long straight potting practice a bit of a chore, hence why in a practice session it's often the first thing that I skip. But it's also the first thing I'd like to be more reliable when I'm playing a match. I've had this set of the balls from Chris Henry Sport for a few months now, and other than the first few weeks of ownership, I really haven't used them to their full potential. So I thought I'd make a real effort with them, maybe use them for a full month and see if I can improve my long straight potting. Because I'm told that the best way to improve long straight potting is to be able to deliver the cue straight through the centre of the cue ball such that the cue ball travels and hits the centre of the red. Both of these things are things that Chris Henry claims that his balls, the, the practice balls, will help you with. But before I go any further, I want to say that this video is not sponsored by or affiliated with Chris Henry Sports. I paid for this set of balls with my own money. Actually, that's not true. My wife bought me them for Christmas, but I asked for them out of my Christmas budget. So once I decided I was going to do this, I started thinking about how I was going to measure success. The obvious solution that came to me was to use some kind of long straight potting practice routine that I could use as a test go away and then work on the balls for a month and then come back and repeat the test and see if there was a discernible improvement. The test that I chose was simply to line up all 15 reds across the middle of the table uh, in line with the blue spot. So putting one red on the blue spot and then the seven either side of it towards the middle pockets, about half a ball width apart, which covers roughly two thirds of the table. Then you place the cue ball on the balk line such that it's in line with the red to its corresponding corner pocket. That is with the exception of the red on the blue spot, which I can choose to pot to either corner pocket. So let's get straight into it and take a look at how I did with that initial benchmark test. <laughs> So not a great result, as you see, and I can't say I've actually ever tried that particular routine before, so I can't even tell you whether that was a good or a bad result relative to what I would normally do. The closest I've done is basically putting all 21 balls across the centre of the table, and uh, which I think you've probably seen on other channels. And I tried that once, and I think I got uh, two or three out of 21. So two out of 15 is probably a fair reflection of how well I would do at a similar routine. But the good news is, because that result was so poor, it should be easy to beat, right? Right? 
So what was I going to do to try and improve? Well, basically, when you buy a set of balls, you get access to a training course, which is provided by the Chris Henry website. And what I was going to do was try and follow that course as far as I could in the month and see where it got me, both in the training course and how successful I was in the test at the end. I started this at the beginning of August, not quite the 1st of August, but just after, and I ended it at the end of August. So it was just shy of a month. But let's take a look at a supercut of me doing some of the practice routines while I talk you through what they involve and how well I did at them. Yeah, I'm not going to show you the videos from the Chris Henry website, which actually tell you how to do the routines. I'll just talk you through them. Basically, I don't want to get a copyright strike from Chris Henry. So here we go then with this montage. And it is a montage. I mean, every sports movie that shows improvement needs some kind of montage, doesn't it? Hey, everyone. Voice over ad here. And I'm just going to talk you through the practice routines I did with Chris Henry's The Balls. And the first one was... The simplest and that was basically putting the balls cue ball on the yellow spot i guess you could use the green spot as well and try and pot it in the opposite corner so this is mainly about trying to find the center of the cue ball basically and trying to deliver the cue straight through the center of the ball and uh, i struggled with this one to start with to be honest and this is sort of like just one session showing how i sort of tuned that in and essentially got uh, a few in a row. Well, I think I'm going to show a couple in a row here. I'm not going to show every attempt. And then I moved on to the potting uh, routine, where this is where you use a normal cue ball and the ball's object ball. And you start off at a short distance, uh, so with the object ball on the pink spot, and you put the cue ball fairly close to it, about sort of uh, six to inches to a foot away, depending on how, you com how, how comfortable you are with it and you essentially have to drive the cue straight through the cue ball and hit the center of the object ball and hopefully what should happen for a successful result is both balls should go in the pocket as you see here so the idea is you do to, to graduate each level you do uh, you need to get four successful attempts out of five at each position um, so what i was doing is essentially just doing keep on doing it and if i get four out of five then I move on to the next one so what you're seeing is, is essentially when I stopped and I got four out of five so that was on the blue spot now uh, sorry that was on the um, like halfway between the pink and the blue spot now we move to the blue spot where it obviously gets a lot harder this is much just a, this this slight extra bit of oh, the lights gone off. this slight extra bit of difference uh, distance makes makes a huge dis dis difference and I really struggled with this one uh, and I'm going to show you a couple. So that was the first time I tried it. This is the next time I tried it. Um, and as you can see, well, it might not even be the next time. It might have been after a couple more attempts, basically, as I sort of got used to it. But it wasn't certainly wasn't the same session as the first. Oh, that was miles away. I almost fluked it into the middle. And uh, yeah, so this was. Oh, God. yeah, it's not going great. I thought I'd better this. That's better. Got no replay on this one, just the single camera, unfortunately. Sometimes I had an extra camera, sometimes I didn't. And that's better. So I got three out of five there, so I'm going to try it again. I'm going to show another attempt. Uh, so first one in, always a good sign. And second one in. Always a good sign. So can I get the four out of five needed to officially graduate this uh, session? Three out of five in. So looking good. Oh, that just rattled in the jaws. So can I get this in for four out of five? No, I can't. So I ended up skipping that routine because I didn't actually get the four out of five. Uh, so the next routine essentially used both routines to get both of the balls together so this is the only routine i've found so far where you use both uh, the cue ball the, the balls cue ball and object ball and it's very similar to what we've just seen but because uh, you essentially try to pop both balls in the same pocket but because you're using both the light balls the the error is exact is a uh, basically amplified if you don't get it straight and again i struggled with this one i couldn't get this one in at all i don't think i got a single successful attempt to be honest uh and this one was this one was particularly hard um so i moved on to the next one straight away and this one was a bit more fun actually so this one you use a normal red and the 
um, balls cue ball. And the idea is you you ping the object ball, uh, you ping the cue ball off the object ball, and it comes back and hits the end of your cue. And you know you got you got to hit it straight just to, for it to come back in relatively towards your direction. But getting it to actually hit the end of your cue is actually really tricky. But I actually enjoyed this, so I persevered with it. See, that was quite far off, but still, in reality, wouldn't have been too far off. I mean, you don't necessarily have to pop the red, but the red should be going towards the pocket. Um, so if the red doesn't go towards the pocket, chances are you haven't got the shot right. Yeah, that wasn't great. I actually had quite a few attempts at this. But uh, I, do, I do have a successful one to show you at some point, maybe more than one. It's getting worse. Yeah, not much better. Come on, I can do this. No, well, slightly better than the last time, but it seems to have got worse from the first few attempts. They all go in roughly the same place, so I'm not really correcting very well. Now it's coming a little bit back towards the queue. No, that's worse. This is tough. If you do get a chance to to have a go at the balls, I recommend having a go at this routine because it is fun. Uh, it's probably one of the more fun routines because you can set it up. You can have quite a lot of goals at it in quick succession. With, whereas the longer ones, you have to obviously walk around and get the balls and stuff like that. It's a bit of a pain. But there we go, that actually did hit the end of my queue. And then I actually got an audience, and that was my best attempt when I actually had an audience. And just to prove how hard it is, this fellow had a go. And I'm not showing this to laugh at him, but just, you know, when you've got absolutely no um, practice, then it really is quite hard. Okay, now we've seen that, full disclosure, I didn't get to practice with the balls as much as I wanted to over the month. August was a very busy month for me in terms of trips away and also I just had quite a lot of friends and matches which meant that my fairly limited snooker playing time was limited further in terms of solo practice because most of the time probably I, I tend to get to the club maybe five times in the week and I'd say in most of those weeks I had two or three matches a week so my time was limited. Also as you saw I skipped a couple of routines before really the course said I should have completed them and moved on but that was mainly because I was getting a bit frustrated and I wanted to see what the next routine was and also to make it a bit more of an interesting video for you guys. But let's put all that aside, did it make a difference to my long potting? Before we take a look at the final test, please give the video a like by hitting the thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. Also, if you're fairly new to the channel and perhaps haven't subscribed already, please do consider subscribing. I really appreciate if you give my channel a chance and subscribe. I'm on a push to try and get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2023. So you could really help me out by uh, hitting that subscribe button. Right, time to roll some reds in, hopefully. <laughs>
Well, as you saw, there was a small but not insignificant improvement, which I'm pretty happy about. I can assure you that I only did that test the twice, the first time at the start and the last time at the end. If I was doing this again, maybe one thing I'd change would be I would do that test three times each time so and then take my best result as the sort of benchmark. But I didn't think of that until afterwards, unfortunately. So was the improvement solely down to using the balls? Well, I don't think so, but I do think they helped. Uh, in, during August, I played a lot of frames and matches, as I said. I also had a coaching session and I generally try to change my mindset into trying to concentrate on my technique and trying to worry less about the consequences of missing a pot or something like that. Uh, and I really do think that has not quite revolutionized my game, but it certainly helped my enjoyment of the game. I will keep using the balls, but probably not uh, every session like I did over this month. Uh, I'll probably do maybe a couple of sessions a month, maybe, but maybe like devote a bit more of a longer session to them. I want to see more of the later exercises because I've heard that they can be quite fun and challenging. Not that these weren't already challenging, but uh, I am keen to sort of get further in the course and hopefully finish the course one day. I may even do the test again just to see if my long potting is moving in the right direction, if it's not obvious from just generally playing, to be honest. And one thing I didn't talk about in this video was the very first routine that Chris Henry gives you as part of the balls training course. And that is a simple routine, which is about finding the center of the cue ball. And I didn't talk about it because I made a specific video on it. So if you want to look at that, please click the card above and you can go and have a look at that right now. But for now, though, that's all from me and I will see you in whatever the next video turns out to be.